I got this brake kit in from a company called Kentucky Mustang. And I tell you what, there's a lot of different disc brake kits out there that are offered, but there's none more complete than this one. And I've put on quite a few of them. Let's take a look at this kit. What we got spread across here is everything that comes with this kit. You got your rotors, which have these cooling vanes in them, which are pretty cool. You got a dual reservoir master cylinder. You got your calipers and caliper adapters, which by the way, these calipers are four piston calipers, the same as they put on the 65 to 67 cars. Uh, you got your dust shields, and a lot of kits don't even come with these. For whatever reason, they don't include these. This kit includes those. You got an adjustable proportioning valve. You even got little bleeders here so you can bleed out the master cylinder before you put on. I, don't, I hardly ever see that in a kit. Uh, they give you the grease. Uh, to, for the bearings themselves, of course your brake pads, uh, lines, bearings, everything that you need to put this kit on is included in this. So we're going to take this kit and we're going to try putting it on a car and we're going to see how it goes. And I tell you what, I think it's going to go pretty sweet because I like the setup I see in front of me here. The first thing we're going to do is remove the master cylinder. On the inside of the car is a clip that holds the brake light switch and the arm in place. Release that clip. Now we're going to come back out here to remove the four bolts that not only hold the master cylinder to the firewall, but holds the reinforcement to the firewall too. We're going to take this brake line out and mount the power booster to the firewall. Take your lines off at the junction block that lead from the master cylinder uh, to the block and then you'll unbolt the master cylinder and pull it off of the firewall itself. Be careful not to spill too much on there. There is some residual fluid. Then there's a couple of upper bolts that actually hold the inside reinforcement in. Remove those upper bolts from the uh, firewall and um, uh, this way you'll be able to have the mounting surface for the new uh, power booster itself. Take the rear line off of the splitter, off of the block, um, because you're going to be putting a small cap in there. That line is going to go directly to a uh, adjustable valve that is given in the uh, in the system itself. Part of the kit is an adjustable valve, and then they give you this little cap that you can screw into the bottom of the the block, the junction block, to cap that off. So this way when the fluid goes through the block, it doesn't go back out that hole. Make sure you tight that, tighten that real securely. That's real important. Put a little bit of Loctite on the end of the adjustable rod coming out of the back of the power booster. Um, that's a good thing to have there. It adjusts the pedal height. Once you finally get into the car, you can kind of tailor it to your own, uh, own needs, depending if you're a tall person or a shorter person. That's a good feature that this kit has. And then just slide the booster itself right up to the firewall, and now it'll mount to the four holes. The two holes that the original master cylinder bolted to, and two holes that the uh, reinforcement itself uh, had bolts to. Same thing, use some Loctite that they give you in the kit, um, because it's very important that these bolts don't back out. This is a brake system we're talking about here. It's also important that you put all four bolts in and uh, tighten them up in an even fashion. So this way it draws the booster in and doesn't um, you know, distort it at all as it goes up against the firewall. It's a little tricky to get the bottom of these bolts. You have to use a, kind of a little bit of a funny wrench, especially with the engine in there. It's not that easy, but you can get to them. They're hidden back there. It's real important that you have lock washers on them. Uh, and also, of course, you already put the, uh, the thread locker on it, too, that was supplied with it. But uh, this inner one here uh, is a little bit more difficult to get to than the upper ones. You can get right to those from the top. And then, of course, the ones that are on the uh, the apron side where the hood hinge is, that's kind of difficult to get to, especially if you got a hood hinge on there and uh, you have a wire loom running through. Now, on the inside of the car, 
you're going to slide on the uh, brake light switch and then put the clip into place that holds that whole rod in there. Take the master cylinder, um, gently clamp it into a vise, and uh, pre-bleed it. It's very important that you bleed the master cylinder. Do not put it in dry because you'll never get any type of a pedal or get the air out of the system. Now that we got our booster and our master cylinder assembly bolted to the firewall here with our proportioning valve that they gave in the kit and all our lines plumbed in, we're going to move to the bottom of the car and start mounting up our rotors and our calipers. Pull your outer bearing off and then take your brake drum off. Um, that's, that's a simple process there, just the uh, cotter pin, the nut. And then there's four bolts that are on the inside of that backing plate there that will spin on you. So it's not a bad idea to get a pair of ice grips on the, uh, the inside of it because it's not something you can put a wrench on. This will hold those in place. You got to remember, these, some of these parts have been there for 40, you know, going on 50 years. So um, it, it's a good idea to try and take some precautions. And uh, once you take those four bolts off, then you'll be able to remove this whole backing plate with the um, uh, brake shoes on and the springs on and the wheel cylinder on. Um, you know, just take the hose off the wheel cylinder. And um, once you do that, then you'll be able to you know, just pull the whole thing off as one, one thing. Now you'll be left with the spindle. The spindle's just sitting there, um, ready to accept the adapter plate that's going to go on it for the uh, for the brake caliper itself. Clean the spindle that's sticking out like that. That's that's where the threaded area is. That's where the bearings lie. So clean that off. It's very important that you keep that clean throughout the whole job process here. First things first, put on the backing plate. There is right and left side to these things. So take note of, uh, of what you got right, what you got left. I usually lay everything out and try and identify it. And then uh, with the grease they supply with the kit, pack your bearings, put them into the brand new rotors they give you, and, uh, and then of course tap the seal on it. Uh, the, they give you a new seal, so tap that seal onto the back of it, and uh, that'll keep the bearing in place while you're putting the rotor on. After you have the backing plate on and the, uh, the spindle adapter on, now you'll be able to slide the rotor into place. Put your outer bearing on. Now remember, you've already packed that bearing, so make sure it's packed. Not only the inner bearing, but the outer bearing gets packed. Put the nut on there. Make sure you do the correct preload on there. Um, usually run it in until it feels like it's snug, and then back it off about uh, maybe a quarter turn. There shouldn't be any free play at all on the rotor itself. And it's a must that you put the cage on and that you put the... Uh, the cotter pin on. Don't forget to put that cotter pin on. Get a good feel for the for the bearing by spinning the rotor like that. That'll help you get a good idea of where you're at as far as your preload goes. Your cage and then your cotter pin. They even give you a brand new dust cap in, in this kit. I mean, this kit, kit is really phenomenal on everything they give you. A lot of kits I've dealt with, they just don't give you everything you need. you got to use piecemeal from the old stuff you got. Not this one. gives you everything that you need. Now that you have your rotor in place, 
You got your shield in place, you got your adapter in place, you can put your caliper on. The caliper's only held on by two bolts to the caliper adapter. And um, once you get those in place, we kind of loosely put those in place and then fit the line that goes to it. Um, it's a good idea to kind of pre-fit a lot of things uh, loosely, get an idea of where they're going to be, and also gives you an idea of how they're going to fit, rather than lock something down and then find out that you got the wrong side on or it just doesn't fit well uh, with the next part that you're supposed to put on. So if you pre-assemble a few things relatively loose, uh, you'll find it'll work better for you. That's what it should look like once the caliper adapter is on there and the caliper is bolted to the caliper adapter. And then uh, now that you've already pre-fitted your line, tighten it up. They give you a uh, anti-rattle adhesive that goes on to the the um, the pads themselves. Um, do use that stuff. If you don't use it, you're you're gonna you're gonna take a chance for rattles and squeaks. Believe it or not, coming out of those pads. It also makes it a little easier to slide into place. But uh, put the stuff on the back of the pads, slide them in, and um, and then on the top what you'll end up having is a cover that uh, that goes on top of these pads. It's a retainer that keeps the, the pads in place. Not a bad idea to put a dab of this stuff on the uh, on the retainer too to keep the pads from rattling against it. And then when you tighten up the two bolts holding that retainer in, they're just little bolts. I mean, they're quarter twenty bolts. They're, they're not very big, so they just need to be snug. Uh, if you try and over tighten them, or if you get too aggressive, you're gonna snap them off of there. And and I tell you what, it's a big pain to try and get the broken bolt out of a caliper. Now this is what your assembled um, caliper uh, and caliper adapter and, and line, this is what this is all should look like. Next put your line on there. They give you a, a, a nice line. It's not just a regular hose, but it's a, it's a braided line. Real nice and flexible, real durable, uh, high tech looking, and it fits real well. Same thing here, test fit the line in there, screw it into place, make sure it fits up to the bracket, um, and then, uh, then lock it down. Make it snug, don't go over tighten with it, because these things do strip real easily. So just make them nice and snug, there we go. Bring it up to the existing bracket, it'll fit to, uh, uh, to the existing bracket, or use their uh, supplied bracket. The supplied bracket is brand new. Uh, it fits right where the old one did and um, it'll accept the new line just as well as the old one did. Lock it down to the frame.
you'll kind of twist the old line into place so this way it'll meet the new bracket you put in there and then you'll be able to take the uh, the hose and bring it up to the new bracket and test fit and screw the old line into it they give you a new clip so you can just tap the new clip in there to hold the uh, new brake line to the uh, new uh, bracket and then now just screw the uh, old line right into the the new hose that they give you things really do go together nicely with this kit this is a really nice kit that's what it should look like you got your new rotor got your new caliper got your backing plate uh, dust shield you got your caliper adapter you got your line on there you got your shield and you got your uh, flexible hose that runs to the new new bracket very impressive looking The only thing we're left to do now is make a good brake adjustment on the back. If you still got your drum brakes in the back, make a strong brake adjustment back there. That's real important to the system. You're going to start from the rearmost wheel cylinder and work your way up front to do a good bleeding on it, and then just find a vacuum source on your engine to hook up the uh, power booster. Other than that, the diagnosis on this system itself that this doctor has given is a great diagnosis. Everything went fine on this system. It was a snap to put on. I had to make a few lines up coming off the master cylinder, which you got to pretty much do with every system, because most cars are different as far as their fittings go. But there was no filing, there was no hammering, there was no grinding, there was no oblong out of holes. Everything just bolted on the way the kit should, and that's real good for the guy at home that wants to just do it himself and save himself a buck. So check out these guys at Kentucky Mustang. Go to KentuckyMustang.com. These guys have been around since 1984. So if you have any other issues on your Mustang, chances are they'll be able to help you on out of it because they have the experience and the chances are they've been there and they've done that.